Ben Heffer from Kingdom MMA here, and I'm now joined on the phone by uh, Jack Mason. Um, Jack's going to be fighting this weekend uh, over in Italy, and he's fighting Roberto Rigamonte at Venator FC. Um, how are you doing, Jack? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not bad, Ben. Thanks for having me on. No problem. And um, the last time we spoke, you'd just beaten Simeon Forreston at BCMMA 10. Looking back on that night now, how good was it to pick up the win? in your own show? Oh, it was, a, it was a stressful night, <laughs> um, to, to say the least, do you know what I mean? Because uh, I'll never be doing that again, you know, uh, putting on a show and, and fighting on it myself. Uh, it's just because there's so many, you know, so many moving parts and things go wrong. And I, it's lucky I had, I had a great team of, uh, I've got a great team of people down at BKK and, you know, they, they all mucked together and uh, you know, the show run like clockwork as usual and uh, you know, all, all thanks to them really. Um, and you know, I got and I got a result myself, you know. So I am not happy with it definitely, but uh, it's not something I'll be uh, repeating, I don't think. And um that night Simeon works a lot on your legs. Um how long did it take your legs to, to recover after after the fight? Uh they don't come with the same for nothing. Uh, I was uh, I was back. I think I was back training the next day. So, uh, so yeah, it was. Um, yeah, well, it wasn't too bad. And um, I thought it, I thought it was going to hurt, hurt more more than that. But, um, but yeah, they were they were too bad. And you were recently in the Philippines for for Luke Barnett's fight. How was the experience being over there and uh, watching Luke and also Mark Munoz's final fight? Uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic show. Some some really good fights on the card as well. And um, yeah, the experience is wicked. You know, Luke's been away at, uh, at Alliance, and um, you know, it's cool to meet some of the guys he's been doing some training with and stuff. You know, like Phil, Phil Davis and, and people like that. And uh, you know, good to see Luke as well because I hadn't seen him for a couple of months. And um, and yeah, it was uh, great. Great fight. I mean, Luke showed his class, I think, but um, you know, he, he was a little bit hesitant. And I think that's what cost him the decision. You know, when you know, I was always expecting that, that Mark might take him down, but on the stand-ups and the breakaways, he, he was supposed to be, you know, let his hands go, you know, a bit more punishing, uh, punishing Munoz when he got the opportunity. But uh, you know, a couple of reasons or whatever, he, he didn't let things go. So uh, you know, Luke's gonna be back, I'm sure. And, uh, and it was, you know, definitely, you know, Munoz is, to be honest, I think Luke took the fight because, you know, I, I always said that Munoz was one of my my, my favourite fighters and uh, and uh, I think, you know, Luke wanted to fight him because of that and, and you know, Munoz was uh, all the class act and, you know, the crowd, crowd loved him and, you know, every single fighter has got a, a good thing to say about him as well. Yeah, I think for, for me, Mark's always going to have a a special place in my heart headline in the first UFC show I saw over in, in England. So he's okay. Um, yeah, I, I went to that one. I think uh, Maguire was fighting on that as well. I think. Yeah, it was Maguire's first fight in the UFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a yep. good night of fights that was. And um, and you mentioned there about what Luke, Luke's game plan there, but uh, the fight didn't go his way, as we all know now. Um, but was he still in good spirits after the fight? Yeah, you know, Luke's living a dream at the moment. You see, San Diego is living on the owner of Bad Boys Yacht um, out there with his fiance and uh, you know enjoying the sun, eating the, the seafood and uh, you know and you know living the life you know you know get to train uh, and make a living off mixed martial arts you know it's everyone's dream and you know he's living at the moment so so yeah he isn't you know he's down about the result but um, I'm sure he'll be back and uh, you know. Back, back to winning ways pretty soon. So hopefully he does get another shot in the UFC, but um, we'll, we'll see what's next for him. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your fight this weekend. You're fighting Roberto Rigamonti at uh, Fenestra FC in Bologna on Saturday. Um, how did this fight come yeah. about? Um, just, uh, I don't, you know, I, I think um, in Tennessee, you know, my my, uh, my management. Um, you know, they, they they've obviously been in contact with uh, with with Venator. Um, I I think 
I, I don't know for certain, but I think you know Mark Mark Collard's been helping with the you know the, the uh, you know the organisation of, of Venator, making sure they've got the right um, you know medical checks and, and blood tests, and you know we've, I've had to follow like Stephen May etc. For, for this fight, um, and you know I think uh, intensely I've heard about this this show. Um, you know, I think it's from Mark Conard or, or something or something like that anyway. And uh, so, you know, they asked they asked intensely for some for, for some UK fighters and uh, you know, I was I was one of the guys that put forward. Cool. And, and you mentioned there about the testing you've done. That was, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you a bit later on, but I'll ask it now. Um, I noticed you tweeted saying about you had to have safe MMA checkups ahead of this fight. Um, yeah. What was involved in that process? And is this something that would yeah. normally happen for a UK show, or is it something that yeah, yeah, is kind of a step so, ahead of us? Yeah, so all, all of the, the, the main shows in the UK, um, you know, you know, uh, Cage Warriors, Bama, uh, a few others, they they, they uh, um, are signed up to the second way, and so basically what happens there is you, you go to the, you know, you either go to the, a safe and made GP or we go to the headquarters in Harley Street which is what I do because it's close to work and uh, the you know he's headed up by a guy called Dr. Jack Grindler and, and he uh, you know basically they take your blood um, they they do medical checks check your eyes you know you know everything you know your hands um, they've even checked my balls once but I don't know anyone else that's uh, that had that check done yet but <laughs> So this this weekend it's it's Roberto Rogamonte that you're going to be fighting. Yeah. What do you know about him? Uh, I, I know that um, well, basically he uh, he trains under uh, Ivan Sarati, and uh, you know Ivan, Ivan Sarati used to be you know do quite a bit of training with TSG and I fought on UWC a lot. Then he, I remember seeing him fight with Victor Belfort on on Cage Rage, yeah. and uh, and he also fought in the UFC as well. So. He, he's a really experienced guy, so he's uh, Rigor Montez's coach. Uh, we, we shared a few a few opponents. We shared a few opponents with Rigor Montez. Um, he, you know, he, he, he's good. He's um, hits tremendously hard. I've, I've you know watched his tape. He, uh, you know, he's, he's got incredible power of his punches. So I've really got to watch out for that. Yeah. And uh, and he's got you know he's got good takedown defense. And um, you know. He's, Definitely a, a durable guy. He's been a distance a few times, and yeah, I've got more work cut out. I think. And um, when? What, what's the process for this week? When will you be travelling out to to Italy ahead of the fight? Uh, so uh, we're, we're flying out Thursday morning, so about seven a.m. I think. So we're going to get there, get there in enough time to you know to to cut the weight and, and make weight on Friday. And. Um, would you say now that at this stage in your career, the experience of fighting abroad and witnessing the crowd in new locations is as much a draw as the fight itself for you? Yeah, it's pretty cool. This, I mean, this is in Bologna. I've never been there. It look, you know, I look, I've Googled it. It looks pretty nice. Um, and it's just the, those experiences, you know, like... That, MMA has given me, like, you know, the opportunity to, like, experience so many... You know, travel the world. I was in the Philippines a couple of weeks ago, with, you know, with Luke. All these types of things, you know. If I hadn't have got involved in MMA and I just continued to do my or, or you know, or just stuck to my nine to five, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get to experience these things. So, I've been really lucky. Um, and, and yeah, this is, this looks like the, probably it looks like probably the biggest stadium I've ever fought in. It, it's a, I think it's a eleven thousand seat stadium. It's the, the Unipol Arena. Yeah. It's on Fox Sports 2, so you know it's going to be a good opportunity for me, and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, it does look like it's a big deal over in Italy as well. So, yeah, another thing actually that really, really, uh, you know, makes me, uh, you know, excited to fight on, on here is that the main event uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, Imanari, who uh, 
who's a leg lock specialist and you know fought my my coach back in the day, Robbie Olivier. Um, so I'm really excited to, to fight on on the other card of, of, of that show. And um, as as both a fighter and a promoter, um, how would you say the landscape? of UK MMA has changed this year since um, Cage Warriors has fallen un- into the issues that it has? I, it's really, uh, honestly, it's uh, just from speaking to, to, to fighters, you know, trying to get fighters on, you know, on, on the BC MMA show, etc. Like, I think UK MMA is really missing Cage Warriors. You know, the, you know, all of the, you know, the, all, all of the elite fighters in, in the UK there's not many of them getting fights, and, and if they are, they, you know, they, they're not the best fights they, they, um, you know, could be having, um, and and they're not getting, not getting the exposure they, they, they could be as well, which Cage Warriors always, you know, always gays people. So it's uh, UK MMA has definitely been hurt by by Cage, uh, Cage Warriors not not being about this year, um, and you know, hoping for a, a swift return. But um, you know, really, really makes you appreciate the, the kind of work Graham Boyd and, and Ian Dean did with the show. You know, some of the opportunities like you know me and and some of the other guys at BKK got. You know, like Arnold and and Sean, etc. Like really, you know, I think uh, yeah, I think that Casual has been sorely missed this year. Um, yeah, I've, I think me on a personal note, I'd say that. Uh... I think the UK needs the two big shows, kind of the Cage Warriors and Bammers, to almost compete with each other to get the the top guys to to be fighting on on those shows. And I think where it's gone to, just Bama uh, being the big show as such for for UK, and then the, the lot of the sh- smaller shows like BCMMA and FCC made for the Cage, they've stepped up, they've put some big fights on, but there's only so yeah, much I mean, that, there's only so much that uh, they can pay to to get the guys there before they're going to be losing money themselves. Exactly, as, as a local promoter, you know, like, a, and at BCMA, the, the, the goal is only to be, you know, the best show in East Anglia, we're not trying to go anywhere else, but, to, you know, trying to, you know, we've got a, a Cage Warriors fighter, um, Tommy Maguire fighting on the, uh, you know, the, the next show, um, but, you know, uh, I'm friends with Tommy, so we've managed to work out a deal, but, you know, in, in order to, BCMA, we don't, you know, our capacity is 1,100, and uh, we don't. You know, without big sponsors, we don't have the the um, the, the money to bring in the, the, the big names. You know, si- you know, myself and Simeon Thorinson was an exception. You know, Simeon again, you know, needed a fight desperately, and he, he took a, a cut in pay. Uh, you know, and I fought, I fought for free. So um, that's you know that's how we managed to put that fight on. But this. I think it's really going to be really difficult for people, you know, and, uh, getting the types of purses you were getting on Cage Warriors, um, it's, it's just, you know, not going to happen now, um, you know, in, on these on these local shows. And uh, and like you said, it's, it's definitely hurt the UK MMA scene. How, how far back would you say in terms of where the UK MMA has grown from over the, over the years, and you being one that's been there all the way through? How far back in in years would you say it's almost affected it? Honestly, it feels like Cage Warriors not being about has put the the, uh, the UK MMA scene about back about four years, I think. Yeah. You know, it's it's, uh, it's a big blow. Um, can't really say much more than that, to be honest. It's uh, they they definitely missed. Um, but uh, just from the production quality, you know, the matchmaking. Um, you know, given the you know the elite fighters the opportunity to fight, you know, on a monthly basis, almost, um, you, you know, that was what Cage Warriors brought to the table, and, and you know, having shows on, you know, Channel Four, etc., was, uh, you know, it was amazing, and um, you know, but Bama are definitely doing some good things. I'm not, I'm not taking that away. Yeah. But uh, you, can, you don't see the only. With, with Bama, you don't see the the best UK guys um, going at it that often. Um, you know, Ed, Ed Arthur and Philpot was a great fight, no, no question about it. But um, yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully, you 
will get to see the, the, the top guys fight each other and, and fighting top international opponents, um, you know, on a regular basis on, on Bama. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's it, definitely. I think they have stepped up this year, but um, like I said before, I yeah, think it's I think it's I think it's uh, it needs the the two big boys there to to almost compete yeah. with each other and push push them both on. And uh, I like, mean, World World Series, oh, sorry, uh, Warrior Fight Series did a great um, did a great job at last weekend with Osnick and uh, and Patrick Valet. That was a you know incredible fight, Bosco. Super exciting, anyways. Always puts on a puts on an amazing fight, and uh, you know they're, they're doing good things as well. So, so we, you know you can't say that you know good things aren't happening in the UK, MMA, but um, but uh, you know we're definitely taking a hit with, with Coach Roy not being there. Yeah, and and you mentioned Warrior Fight Series. Uh, we've just had a, a video that's gone out that um, our cameraman Tom did, and it's a behind the scenes look there. So. Make sure you uh, go and have a look at that. It's a, it's definitely a good watch. Shows you what yeah, goes on behind the scenes. Talking about Tom Mole. Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got yeah. Tom on there. We've got um, all all the other guys as well fighting behind the scenes. But Tom, we've got a separate interview um, yeah. with him. I'm looking forward to him fighting again next month at BCMMA too. Yeah, he's a uh, he's super hard working and uh, you know he's he's a real talent. He's only really been in the gym six months and he's, uh, he's coming on. Leaps and bounds, but on a striking clinic in his in his last fight. So that's that's exactly what Tom. Tom I, I I couldn't make it to to Warrior Fight Series, but Tom, who was there, told me that he um he definitely looks a completely different fighter to the guy that fought even at in his first fight. So yeah, the future's bright for him. Yeah. And um, uh, what would you say that after this fight, after a win at the weekend, what what does the future hold for Jack Mason? I don't know. Um, I don't know where, you know, where I'll just be looking um, to get fights wherever I can. Um, so, so yeah, I'll just be, you know, I just want to keep, keep winning, um, keep fighting the best guys and, and just keep experiencing all the, all the good things that, you know, MMA brings. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'd, I'd love to fight for the UFC. Um, I think I, I think I match up well with, with a lot of the guys there. I, you know, I put my, you know, I put my years in. I thought, you know, I've, I've really improved over the last, you know, three four years, and you know, I've tested myself against the, the very best guys out there. So, yeah. I, I think I, you know, I feel like I, I've I've earned, you know, you know, a shot. I know my record isn't, you know, isn't the best, but um, you know, it's it's solid, and you know, I've I've really put the the, the years in and and, and the, the time in the cage, you know, I'd like to to be able to you know go out there, put some finishes in, get some top guys, and then, and then get a get a shot in the UFC. Yeah, I think the the difference your record holds against a lot of the guys these days seem to be that um, you get the guys that are ten and 0, 12 and 0 that are trying to get in the UFC, but they've just been fighting cans. Whereas you fought the who's who of UK MMA. For the last what five, six, seven years, and exactly. uh, yeah, you've lost some, but the wins that you have got are against uh, a lot of the elite guys as well. So it's um, yeah, it definitely stacks up against any other guy's record. And um, finally, um, coming up next month, we've got um, BCMMA there that you've, you've mentioned it before. BCMMA eleven goes down on. June the thirteenth, and um, what can uh, talk us through the card? There, You've, the the top two fights alone are uh, potentially two of the best UK MMA fights that you're going to see this year. With uh, yeah. Cool Edge and Maloney, and um, the one that I'm really looking forward to is um, Steve Amable and Fear McLeaders. It's it's just yeah. I, I mean, Cool Edge uh, Maloney is going to be you know. He's going to be a great fight. Um, Malone really impressed in his in his last fight. Uh, you know, head kick knockout. Yeah. Coolidge looked looked great against Charlie Leary as well. And uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, I know from from training with Coolidge that he he's been improving in time. So and that you know he's he's the champ of BCMA. And he, he wants to defend that belt a lot. And 
been putting the work in. So, so really, uh, really looking forward to that fight. Aimable versus uh, Michaelides is uh, 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 those two are two of the most exciting fighters in in the UK MMA, and uh, I can't wait for that fight. I can't. I just feel uh, I just feel really privileged of being able to put that fight on, and uh, you know. I, my mouth is watering at the, the anticipation of that fight, so, so it should be fantastic. Um, I, Steve Abel was, you know, before he even before he just trained at the BKK, I, I refereed one of his fights, and uh, he uh, he hit a guy with a, with a flying elbow, and and the guy's head split open, uh, and he was spurt, spurting blood out like a you know like a whale, and um, I had to stop the fight from that, and. Uh, he just been, you know, one of my favourite fighters ever since then because he he just always brings it every time he's in the cage. Uh, yeah. So I'm really excited for that fight. Um, um, and and yeah, from, from like top to bottom on this uh, on the card on on the 13th of June, we've got we've got about I think currently we've got about 20 fights, and uh, you know we've got a, we've got a lot of um, Scandinavian fighters. So we've got lots of uh, lots of Norwegian and Swedish guys coming over. We've got some we've got some guys from um, We've got uh, Paul Byrne fighting Ty Palmer. Uh, Paul Byrne from from SBG Island, yep. um, and and fighting Ty Palmer from uh, Combat Sports Academy for the uh, for the middleweight pro belt. That should be a fantastic fight as well. Um, I've seen both those guys guys fight live before, and uh, you know they both bring it. So you know, I, from top to bottom on on the card, we've got. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable fight card, and the amateurs are, you know, always entertain. Did you have one yeah. one fight on the amateur card? I'm really looking forward to is uh, is Wendy McKenna going and, for a uh, second belt. Yeah, she's she's going for a second belt this time at the the weight class she should be fighting at, which is is one fifteen. Yeah. And um, you know, she's so excited to to watch. She always brings it, and and you know, I. Yeah, it's going to be uh, just a fantastic night. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's going to be uh, a good night of fights. So if you haven't already, go and get these tickets for it. It's uh, it's one to one definitely to watch. Bcma.co.uk. There we go. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time. It's um, been a pleasure as always, and um, good luck on Saturday. And uh, we'll catch up with you after your fight.